president, and I agree with Steve that the only reason that Kamala Harris made an attempt at this photo op, which is what it turned out to be, is because Donald Trump announced that he was going to the border. We will be there with him. We'll be there with Greg Abbott today. Um, is because he went there. Imagine if Donald Trump as president in the middle of a pandemic and the images that we saw of really, I call them, they're cages, they're plastic cages, but the kids were trapped inside them. They had no opportunity to leave them. They're overcrowded in the middle of a pandemic, living on top of each other, high rate of, of testing positive for COVID. Military bases. Military bases. And Sexual assaults. Right, exactly. And then they wouldn't allow the governor of Texas to send in Child Protective Services to even look at these children. Now, yeah, you know what? If we don't protect these kids, we're doing everybody a disservice here. It's a 25-year high. We're probably on record now to bring in millions of illegal immigrants. In the dark of night, they're literally transporting them to all the different states in, in the country. And then the states are then burdened because they're not allowed to circumvent federal law. It gets a little complicated. And the states that are responsible for food, water, shelter, uh, for health care and education, and, and they can, we can barely afford it for American citizens right now. So what's going to be your approach uh, tonight? you got the governor of Texas and you have the uh, former president of the United States. Uh, are, are you going to be seeing what they're doing tonight, bringing that to the show? How do you plan on progressing through this town hall? You know, Brian, if, if you would have told me that Joe Biden's economy would be this bad this quickly, I don't think I would have believed it. It usually takes a little bit longer. If you would have told me they would open the borders, it, it, it's beyond open borders. Because you don't get to pick and choose in America. None of us are allowed to pick and choose what laws we choose to obey and what laws we choose not to obey. And not only is Joe Biden and Kamala Harris they're, they're, they're choosing not to enforce the laws of the land, respecting our law, our borders, our sovereignty. Then they're aiding and abetting in the law breaking because they're only processing people that are coming in. They abolished the Stay in Mexico pro program, highly successful. They abolished building the wall. They not only brought back catch and release, but it's basically catch and we'll process you and have a good life in America uh, program of Joe and Kamala. But then they're providing all of the services on the backs of the American taxpayer. I'm all for immigration, legal immigration. So, right. so that's going to be the focus tonight. That'll be a big part of it. Yeah. The other thing is, is 90% of the heroin in this country comes across that border. We have an opioid crisis. 95% right. of the fentanyl in this country that is killing many children, on average, 300 Americans a week are dying, right. that is crossing that southern border. I've been down to the southern border in the course of my career, and this might be my 15th time. I've been, by the way, if you want to see a really funny film, watch me on horseback. Um, <laughs> I've been on horseback, all-terrain vehicles, uh, I've helicopters, planes. I've seen drug warehouses. I've been from the Rio Grande all the way through San Diego. I've seen literally tunnels built from Mexico up into office buildings in San Diego. The problem is severe, but Trump had fixed it. This problem was resolved. Now we're about to hit a 25, 30 year high of illegal immigrants in the country, and, and we're, not even, we're, not, we're not even deporting illegal criminal immigrants in this country. Sean, I was looking up. We'll be uh, yeah, we will be watching. I was looking up. We were talking about Oakland, and uh, it's one of the one of the most dangerous cities in our country. And I was looking up the most dangerous cities this morning, and then it, it gave me cities in other countries. There were three, I think, on the top ten list, and they were all along the border of Mexico. Those are the folks who live there who want to come into our country, and the Biden administration is letting them just come in free willy nilly. They can walk right over. You know, there's a, there's a human compassionate side to this debate, but it's got to be done legally. Right. Look, I remember once I was standing in San Diego right on the border, and on the San Diego side, you've got, you know, $500,000 homes, million-dollar homes, and then on the other side, you, you see nothing but utter poverty. It's not America's role, however, to bring every single person that you know, can't take care of themselves. Look, there are three criteria I would have for entry into America. Number one, 
I would make it that you have to have a background check so we know that you don't have radical associations. Post-COVID, I would say anybody that wants to enter the country legally, they would need a health check of some kind. And the third thing I think people would need to be able to prove is that they're able and capable right. financially to take care of themselves then go through the process legally, and I don't care where you come from, then my answer is welcome to America, we're glad you're here. Indeed. Um, one more topic before you're gonna have to go, and that is uh, our president has adopted a new way of communicating. He did it yesterday again, the way he did it last week, and essentially it's George Bush. Bush. It's it's read my lips, I'm whispering, I'm watch, watch, watch. Joe Biden, yeah, watch. We're waiting for relief. I got him. One point nine trillion dollars relief so far. They're going to be getting checks in the mail that are consequential. I wrote the bill on the environment. Why would I not be for it? Pay them more. This is an employee's employee's bargaining chip now. Hey guys. I think it's time to give ordinary people a tax break. So, Sean Hannity, <laughs> on, on Whispering Wednesday, can you explain why he's talking like that? Yes, I, I actually can, but okay. some people get angry that I do it. You know, I have been saying for quite a while, we've been showing tape on Hannity. Joe Biden in 2012, Joe Biden in 2016, Joe Biden today. Um, how do I say this nicely? I call him very affectionately President Sippy Cup. Because if you look at Joe's schedule, he has less than one item usually a day on his agenda. Uh, they hide him as often as possible. Did you ever imagine we'd have a president of the United States that's constantly saying, I, I can't answer questions because they're going to get mad at me from the back. They're going to they're gonna yell at me. Um, he goes to bed at like 7 o'clock at night. He gets his warm milky, his sippy cup, maybe a night-night story. And it, a part of it is funny, but now to me it's getting a little scary because it's emboldening people that really don't like us, like, oh, Vladimir Putin, President Xi of China, Kim Jong-un, Iranian mullahs, radical Islamic terrorists. Uh, I am very, very concerned. He, he looks weak, frail. He's a cognitive mess. And uh, Steve, I, I don't know what that little whisper thing is all about but it's very odd, bizarre, and strange to me. Right? Well, That's every, the only way I can explain it. A secret. Every, time he, every time he does it, he makes a highlight. <laughs> 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 All right. And right. 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 Everyone wants me to give them, well, I've had sippy cups made up with the presidential seal on it. Everybody wants them. It's gonna be a big hit. It's gonna be a big hit. I can see you bring one of President Trump down at the border tonight. Right. It'll be as big a hit as the Gutfeld T-shirt, which is capturing America's imagination. Well, well <laughs> President Trump's policies worked. The policies now are not working. By the way, and look how hard it is on Governor Governor Abbott. Legally, he's not allowed to enforce federal immigration law. So now we now he's got to spend two hundred and fifty million dollars as a start to continue building the wall that Donald Trump was building. So let me just tell you how powerful you are. You're the first guest we've had in the history of this show that no one in our ear is saying rap. Because we just really care about I, mean, I, I don't rap on my own show. Why should I rap on your show? Like, they're not even telling us to rap you. <laughs> All right, Sean, Eddie, you got a break. It's a Can hard you break. Can you stay for another yeah. hour, Sean? Uh, calm down. Calm down. What's that? Can you stay for another hour? I, I'm sure I could. I'll be a little late for the interview. But <laughs> we'll be on Jimmy tonight. All right. All right, guys. All right, thank, thank you. Tell thanks for having me. Love your show. Watch every morning. Thanks, Sean. All right. All right. And he watches for me, I think. All right, we are two minutes and 48 seconds over time, but nonetheless, we had Sean Hannity. So now, Power 3 of Fox and Friends starts. Violent crime is skyrocketing, and now Democrats, they want to blame Republicans? That's like an arsonist showing up at the fire and blaming the fire. We are facing some serious challenges, and having less resources is not going to help us. If you know your history, you know 
the full song of the national anthem. It does not speak for black Americans. The black community are learning through these kind of people that this country is not for them, and that's the worst message you give to anyone. In a matter of hours, former President Trump will return to the southern border. If you meet with our border patrol, they know that President Trump had their back, and that body wants to fight them and take away their ability to do their job. And Obama appointed federal judge tossing a New York City gun case, citing a lack of racial diversity in the grand jury. I think it is an insult not only to American democracy, but to the American legal system as we know it. Now. The future of travel has arrived. The air car can reach heights of more than 8,000 feet after landing. It can transform into a sports car in less than three minutes. singing this song for us, not live, he, he taped it uh, at a different point. But that is a really wide shot of Atlanta, uh, where no matter what time of day it is, there's a lot of traffic. Yeah, say hello to my friend Cindy and Al, they're watching this morning. They yeah, I see right there. Yep, there they are down there the somewhere. Caprice. At one point there was going to be a, a baseball all-star game. I don't know if you heard. Right, they ended up moving it out. Election reform. Welcome to hour three of Fox and Friends. We're just about five minutes late. We had a guest who joined. We just couldn't wrap up because he had a lot to say. Right. No, we couldn't wrap up. No one trouble. We didn't want to leave. We wanted to stay forever, but he had to go to Texas. We were just talking to Sean Hannity. He's been just joining us, and he's heading to Texas for that town hall. He's going to meet with President Trump yep. and with Greg Abbott down there on the board. Right. The first topic we talked to Mr. Hannity about was how the White House is now flipping. Which is what we have to call. Of course, Mr. Hammond. Uh, the White House is flipping the script over the last week, given the face that their poll numbers are underwater when it comes to the spike in crime all across the country. They have to come up with a new uh, narrative, and the narrative is this. Republicans are the ones who are defunding the police because they voted against the $1.9 trillion American Rescue Plan. Republicans voted against it because there was close to half a trillion dollars worth of what they refer to as a blue state bailout. And when you look at the people who are actually talking about defunding the police, you know what? They've got something in common. None of them are Republicans. Watch. Yes, I support the defund movement because this is about the, the um, investment in our communities which have historically been divested. Not only do we need to defund, but we need to dismantle and start anew. Why use the word defund? Why use the word defund? And it's like, this is the word that's coming from the streets. Defund the police does not mean abolish the police. It means a dramatic reduction in the number of police in our poor communities. I am to defunding the police. <laughs> the reality is, we can't rely on the police to provide public safety. It's a moment to reimagine police and to take things off the shoulders. And what we also want is a reconception of how we achieve public safety. How do we take out many of the responsibilities that police officers are now dealing with by investing more into housing, into education, into these other things? You know, in, in many cities in America, over one third of their city budget goes to police. So we have to have this conversation. What are we doing? Yeah, what are we doing? Uh, well, whatever we're doing, it's going, uh, crime is going in the wrong way. It's going up. You know where the police forces are going? Down. You know where the budgets are going? Down. In Baltimore, in Austin, in Minneapolis, in New York, in Portland, in Seattle, all down. All, what do they have in common? All Democratic mayors in charge. For example, in Oakland in particular, we've been focusing on that a lot lately because it's probably the crime, uh, crime capital of the country. Uh, carjacking up almost 100%, homicides up 82%, assaults up 18%. Even arson is up. And the, pro the President of the United States does not want to talk about crime and punishment because he believes he got elected because he supported uh, some of the chaos in the streets and police reform. But the numbers are so overwhelming now for the most vulnerable in our country, who are the victims in our country, that he had to come out and make up a story that it's all about gun dealers, ghost guns, and guns on the streets. Well, uh, many cases, illegal guns don't help. They're not the impetus of the problem. You cannot take $17 million out of the Oakland uh, law enforcement budget and expect them to be effective. And that, according to the police chief, and logic. We are facing some serious challenges in Oakland that we need the resources to be able to address it. And having less resources is not going to help us manage this problem. 
the vast majority of Oaklanders uh, want to see a more robust police force. They want to see a greater police presence in their community. And the members of the Oakland Police Department uh, that come here every day, put on their uniforms, knowing that they're going out there to face difficult circumstances, are still truly committed to making this city safe, despite the budget cuts. We're going to do everything in our power to make Oakland a safe city. We just need their help. It's just hard because the number of 911 calls going up there, crime is up 90 percent in Oakland. Congresswoman uh, Corey Bush, she's the Democrat from Missouri. She says she's putting together this $10 billion plan, People's Response Act. It's going to limit the interactions that you would have with police, and they're going to send health officials to your house, not the police, to respond to the emergencies. Ed Mullins, who is the president of the New York Sergeants Benevolent Association here in New York, he says we are dealing with nothing but Democrats, 40 years in the NYPD, and we are getting no support from the Democratic elected officials, absolutely none. He has talked with law enforcement officials and other Democratic-run cities, he says, and they aren't getting support from Democratic elected officials either. NYPD is down 2,000 police officers. It's really something so outing in uh, Oakland, where we just saw the chief, you know, they've cut the $17 million, and I asked him when we were interviewing him, I said, uh, did you know that uh, Joe Biden is now saying you can use coronavirus money to uh, keep your cops on the beat? And he said, no, I didn't know it until the uh, announcement last week. That's because the White House didn't tell anybody because it doesn't mention the police, but because now they are in a pickle, they gotta figure a way out. So it's like, oh, there's this great big pot of money. In reality, the cities and states can use the money for anything they want. So if they want, if Oakland, California, wants to add $17 million out of that pot of money, they can do it. The question becomes, do the progressives in Oakland want to do that, or do they want fewer cops on the beach, despite the fact that, Brian, to your point, crime's through the roof. Well, and every city is different. What if he wanted to use that money, but city council is already cutting his budget, almost yeah. $20 million. They're not going to give him the money to use. Take the $17 million that they would have given to the cops and use it somewhere else. They can use it anywhere they want. Sean Hannity talked a little bit about this and how the Democrats were behind this just about 15 minutes ago right here on the show. Watch this. Here's Mr. Hannity. Well, Harris praised the defunding efforts that took place in California, in Los Angeles specifically. Kamala Harris also promoted the bail fund in Minneapolis. Uh, it was New York City that cut a billion dollars from the police budget. Crime went through the roof. Uh, then they come up with these insane no bail laws. Look, if you look at where this is happening, last year we had record increases in violent crime. In, in, in every case, these are blue states, blue cities, run by Democrats for decades. They're the ones that push the defunding of the police. And fast forward to today, after a year of defunding the police, crime is through the roof. Is there a connection? Of course there's a connection. All right, well, let's pivot to this. There's Gwen Berry, we've been talking about her the last few days. She's that U.S. Olympic hammer thrower, and she sparked outrage because she turned her back to the flag. She didn't uh, recite the national anthem. She put the black t-shirt over her head that said, activist athlete. She is now saying she never said that she hated our country. Listen to this. I never said that I didn't want to go to the Olympic Games. That's why I competed and got third and made the team. I never said that I hated the country. Never said that. All I said was I respect my people enough to not stand or acknowledge something that disrespects them. I love my people, point blank, period. If you know your history, you know the full song of the national anthem. The third paragraph speaks to slaves in America, our blood being slain and, and pilchered all over the floor. It's disrespectful and it does not speak for black Americans. It's obvious. There's no there's no question. Well, it's the third, uh, third stanza in which he complains about, uh, and it's been uh, controversial. Uh, Francis Scott Key wrote a long poem that became a, a song. Uh, first stanza, Battle of Baltimore, 1814. We hold off the British able to, uh, after Washington burns to the ground. That's why they wrote it. It was an inspirational time in America's past. We'd never be invaded again. The third stanza is controversial. You have people saying that he's talking about the impressment of all Marines by the British. Others say, which he actually uh, says, is that this is talking about the British offering uh, the slaves freedom if you would just fight with us. Regardless, 
to drill down on the third stanza, on the third st uh, on a part of a song we never sing, that's not part of our national anthem at all, to not see the greatness in the country, the way the red, white, and blue, and the glory that you could be covered with in Tokyo, uh, you really have to wonder if Dan Crenshaw wasn't 120% right when he said, if you don't want to stand for the national anthem, if you want to turn your back to it, maybe you shouldn't be on the team. And, and bringing it full circle to what we were talking about first thing this segment about defunding the police, uh, that particular athlete, Gwen Berry, is uh, being funded. She's being sponsored by Color of Change, which is a left-wing group that advocates for the defunding of police. We don't know whether or not uh, Gwen Berry is for the defunding of police, but her sponsor, which is going to pay yeah. her through the end of this year, is. Puma also gives money to this organization. You would think that she would agree with the organization, though, because she is an activist. Mm -hmm. And she probably did her research I to find out more about this. Uh, the president of that organization said policing is a violent institution that must end. Defunding the police allows for this vision. Well, uh, that is the attitude of most Democrats that got us into the place we're on right now, and horrified, experienced politicians like James Clyburn, who said this is one of the dumb, including former President Barack Obama, said it was one of the dumbest things and the dumbest slogans he's the ever heard. The double down on it. They love it. AOC, You're right. You're right. But just to see her last Saturday at the Pacific Northwest during the Olympic trials on the medal stand turn her back. According to a former NFL player, Congressman Burgess Owens, terrible message. They're hurting, and who these people always hurt are those who, those who look up to athletes like this, those who don't have a family, don't have fathers. Uh, they're going to grow up hating our country because they see their heroes hating our country. So yes, they're hurting an entire generation, particularly of those, uh, those, uh, those folks who are at risk. The black community are learning to these kind of people that this country is not for them, and that's the worst message you give to anyone in a country that gives so much, so much freedom and opportunity. Okay. Megan McCain said this is she's making it about her. It's not about her. She said it's about all Americans and the American people. And her father, you know, is POW. All right, eight fifteen here in the East. Now let's talk about our southern border and the crisis there. Today, former President Trump will get a first-hand look at what is going on there. He will tour the border with Texas Governor Greg Abbott. It is his first trip to the border since he left office. Greg Tribble uh, from our Citizen Network Fox Business, which I also watch because I have cable, I have a lot of choices. I choose that with this. Uh, live from McCallum in Texas. Hey, Greg. Hey, good morning, Steve Ainsley and Brian. And this stretch of the Rio Grande Valley is what many consider to be ground zero of the border crisis right now. And this area is the backdrop for former President Trump and Governor G Greg Abbott's visit today and we have seen firsthand how busy border patrol agents are here we watched them yesterday evening as they picked up several people who told us they came all the way from el salvador republicans have been critical of where vice president kamala harris chose to visit last week here in texas law enforcement officials we've talked to say this is the area lawmakers need to see one thing that's very important is to come down and visit the Rio Grande valley del rio Visit those areas, visit with the, the landowners, the ranchers, the farmers, visit with law enforcement, come to the front lines and see the first time what's taking place. But you feel you haven't necessarily seen that from the federal government. That's correct. Also this week, Mexican immigration authorities shared this picture of a two-year-old boy abandoned on the side of a highway. He was separated from a group of migrants, also from El Salvador, being brought north through Mexico in a hot truck. So this is the state of the crisis here in uh, the Texas border as President, former President Trump, as well as Governor Greg Abbott, come to visit today. Of course, the president will visit the border wall that he helped erect and that President Biden has stopped construction of. Back to you. All right, Grady, we thank you very much. You know, it is a study of contrast when you look at the two presidencies. So Donald Trump was down there at the border where it was happening all the time to the point where they started building the wall and the flow of migrants slowed down. Joe Biden, Kamala Harris, not so much. Well, and look at what's happening today. He's visiting the McAllen area where everyone says that's the epicenter of this mm -hmm. crisis. And then she just stopped for a photo opportunity. He was there for, what, 90 minutes? Yeah. At the other end, at El Paso, in El Paso, and then went on to California. Yeah, she said that's the place in which the child separation policy was implemented by President Trump. So she wanted to emphasize that. Uh, meanwhile, 17 minutes after the hour. Uh, let me just uh, bring this up again. Uh, Sean Hattery's town hall will be tonight. He's going to be heading down there shortly. He'll be the former president of the United States. 
and Governor Abbott taking questions unscripted will be fun. It will be indeed. All right, 818 here in the east now.